Here we're going to be going through an example where we will be applying some lease testing criteria to determine what type of lease we should be recorded recording here for the lessee and the lesser. So our first criteria that we're going to be testing for here is the transfer of ownership, a bargain purchase option, economic life test on the lease, and recovery of the investment here in the lease. So let's go over and look at, at our lease arrangement here. And I'm just going to note the items here that we're going to be using for this example. So we have a yearly rental rate here of $30,000. Dollars uh, per year for this lease, and then the lease term is for 10 years. The estimated economic life for the leased asset here is going to be for 25 years, and then we have a purchase option here. At the end of 10 years, the lessee can purchase it for $150,000, and at the end of 15 years, the lessee can purchase this asset for $8,000. And then we also have the fair market value at the start of the lease here, and that leased asset is $240,000, and then the cost of the asset to the lesser is also $240,000. So the fair market value and the cost here are equal here. And then we have this residual value where we're going to have zero guaranteed and zero unguaranteed residual. So what this is telling us is the lesser does not expect to repossess the leased asset at the end of the lease. He's not going to expect to get this back here. So then we also have this incremental interest rate and that's for the lessee here. They're going to their incremental borrowing rate is going to be at 12 percent per year and then we're going to be calculating the present value of this the minimum lease payments here to be two hundred and thirty thousand three hundred and six dollars and then we also have this fair fair market value at the end of the lease at the end of ten years the fair market value is a hundred and sixty thousand dollars for this leased asset and the at the end of fifteen years the fair market value is a hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the leased asset so let's go up and look at our testing that we have to do for each of those items here so first First off, uh, number one here, the lease does not transfer ownership, so uh, there, it doesn't pass that test here. And then the second test here for a bargain purchase option here, well, at the end of 10 years, they could buy the lease. He can buy it for $150,000 here, uh, the option price. But the fair market value is only $160,000 at the end of 10 years. So it's unlikely that the lessee is going to exercise this bar bargain purchase option. But let's look at the end of 15 years here. So the option price here, the lessee can purchase the asset here for $8,000, and the fair market value here at the end of the 15 years here is $120,000. So at the end of 15 years. It's likely that the uh, lessee is going to uh, uh, use this bargain purchase option here and purchase the asset here for $8,000. So uh, it would pass the test here for the bargain purchase option. So with the bargain purchase option, now we can determine our economic life test here. So this is where the lease term has to be greater than 75% here of the economic life of the asset. So for our lease term here, we include the 10,000 or 10 years for the the lease uh, term on the lease here, plus we add a uh, five years because it's likely that or they're going to exercise this bargain purchase option. So we add five years on it. So we get 15 years here for the lease term with the bargain purchase option. So now to determine our economic life, we just take the 15 years here for the uh, the lease term that we determine, and you divide it here by the economic life of 25 years. So uh, here we get 60% only. So it, it's less than the 75% hurdle rate that we required. So it doesn't pass this economic life test. But the next uh, test we're going to be looking at is this recovery of the investment here. So first off, we have to determine our present value of this minimum lease payments. And first for the rental payments here of $30,000 per year, we got the 12% interest rate per year, and we got the 15-year uh, lease term with the uh, bargain purchase option here. So we discount this $30,000 payment amount back for 15 years at 12%, and its present value here is $228,845. That's for the rental payment. Now we include this bargain purchase option here as well. So uh, we would discount that back here. The $8,000 discounted back here for 15 years at the 12% interest rate. Its present value here would be worth $1,461. So what we would do here is we'd add the $228,400. 
or $845 plus the $1,461, and we get $230,306 here for the present value of those minimum lease payments when we include both the rental payments here and this bargain purchase option. So now we do our testing here. So let's look at the fair market value. Uh, it would be $240,000 here, and our test rate is 90%. So we take 90% here times the $240,000, and 90% of the fair market value would be $216,000. Now we can make our comparison here to see what the recovery of the investment would be here. So in this case, the present value has to be greater than 90% of the fair market value. So our present value here is uh, $230,306, which is greater than the $216,000. So it passes the test here. We can also look at it in this in these terms here we would take the two hundred and thirty thousand three hundred and six dollars and divide it by two hundred and sixteen thousand dollars the fair market value that gives us a hundred and six point six percent which shows that it's greater here the present value is greater than ninety percent here of the fair market value so it passes the test here so now we can go on and and just look at our uh, flow diagram on this to see what tests we would had passed now let's summarize what we've tested here from the lessee's perspective. So we tested for the transfer of ownership, uh, the bargain purchase option, and the lease term being greater than or equal to 75% of the economic life. And we've also tested here for the present value of the minimum lease payments to be greater than or equal to 90% of the fair uh, market value of this asset being leased here. So if we pass any one or more of the tests here, we would classify it as a capital lease here for the lessee. But if we failed all of these tests here, then it would be classified as an operating lease here by the lessee. So first for our transfer of ownership, well, we failed that test here because the lease did not transfer the ownership. But our bargain purchase option, if we passed that test here because it's likely that the lessee will uh, opt to buy this asset here at $8,000 since the fair market value would be $120,000 here at the end of 15 years. And then for our economic life test, well, we fail that one here because uh, the lease term is only 60%, uh, but it has to be at least 75%, greater than 75% or equal of the economic life here, but it's only 60%, so it's less than the 75% here, so we failed that. Now for our recovery of investment, well, we passed that test here since uh, uh, the uh, present value here of the uh, uh, minimum lease payments are 230306 which are greater than 90% of the fair market value of 216000 or doing the division on it, the present value here is 106 uh, 0.6%, which is greater than 90% here of the fair market value. So, just to summarize here, this lease should, uh, the lessee should account for the lease as a capital lease because it meets uh, the second um, test criteria here, the bargain purchase option, and it also uh, meets or exceeds here the test for the recovery of the investment here of 90%. Now let's look at applying the lessor's testing criteria here and we'll be looking at it from the lessor's perspective here. And what we'll be doing here is we're going to be looking to see uh, doing using our test criteria here to determine if it's an operating lease, a sales type lease, or a direct financing lease. So the first thing we have to look at here, does the lease meet any of the lessee's criteria? Uh, those uh, criteria or those tests we made one through four here. And yes, it does, since the lessee's criteria was satisfied for the bargain purchase and a 90% recovery of the investment. So we can answer yes to that. Now, if it was no, it we would go down here and be classified as an operating lease. And then the next thing we'd be looking at here, and this is the separate test criteria here for the lesser. And number one is the collectability of the lease payments reasonably certain. And let's just say yes. If no, then it would become an operating lease. And number two here, um, the criteria or test criteria you'd be looking here for the lesser is, is the lesser's performance substantially complete? And what we mean by that, there would be no uncertainties on the costs, to, uh, further costs to be incurred here by the lesser. So uh, we'll just say yes. If no, it would have been an operating lease, but let's just say it's yes in this case. So this is the uh, test criteria that we come down here to determine if it's a sales type lease or a direct financing lease. And does the asset's fair value 
equal the lesser's book value. And what we're looking for is a profit and loss here on this lease. So let's go up here and look at our lease arrangement here. The fair market value of the, the lease at our value of the asset here being leased at the lease start date here is $240,000. Now the cost of the asset to the lesser is also $240,000. So the cost of the asset equals its fair market value here at the start of the lease. So what we would do is we'd go down here and just look at this. Now the difference between a direct financing lease and a sales type lease is the presence or absence of any profit or loss to the lessor here. So we have the $240,000 fair market value less the $240,000 cost of this asset. That equals zero. So we have no profit or loss here. And with no profit or loss on the lease, therefore it's a direct financing lease. So here, uh, we answered that question. Does the asset's fair value equals the lesser's book value? value. And yes, it did here. So it's a direct financing lease. So in this case, the lesser would account for the lease as a direct financing lease. And then again, if it meets the lesser's criteria of tests one and two. So it has to meet uh, the tests here. Is uh, Number one here is the collectability of the lease payments reasonably certain. And two is the lesser's performance substantially complete. Now you can see here if we answered no to any one of these questions here, it would have been an operating lease. And then when we got down here, does the assets fair market value equal the lesser's book value? And it, we, if it was no here, it becomes a sales type lease. If yes here, it com becomes a direct financing lease.